Good morning everyone and welcome to your online statistics course. My name is Robin Davis and I am your statistics professor this semester. I wanted to give you just a quick video tutorial on uh, the navigation for your MyStatLab course. So once you purchase access, you'll just click on the link of your course and that takes you to the actual uh, course navigation and it starts out on the course homepage and the course homepage contains a variety of features such as a weekly calendar, a results section, your upcoming assignments list with a countdown, and then your announcement section here. So review all that information each time that you log on uh, just to make sure that you're on track with the assignments and the deadlines. Uh, what I want you to do once you get into the course is go down each of these menu options and look at everything that's in these folders just to make sure that you're aware of all the information for the course. Uh, the getting started folder is the next one I have in line and this one is just what it says. You have to do all of the information in here before um, you actually start the course. So come into the folder, read all the information, uh, follow the directions. So if you need to download any of the document viewers, you can do that. Print off all of the course documents here and read all the information given. Take the syllabus and course information quiz. Introduce yourself in the discussion board. And then if you want the optional textbook, you can order one but remember that your course has the online textbook included and then proceed to the coursework folder and so the coursework folder here is the next item in the list and in this folder it's a drop down so there's multiple folders inside this one folder and so in here you have your exam blocks and there's exam one two three and the final exam block and what I've done is I've structured your course with all of the information, all of the lessons that you have to complete, all of the assignments that you have to do are listed in each of the exam blocks. So let's go ahead and go into exam one block and this is where you'll actually start for the course. A reminder here to do your syllabus quiz if you haven't done it yet because you have to get 100% on that quiz before you can access any of the assignments. Once you do that, you've got an assignment section. So for exam one block, you have to complete activity one, stat crunch lab one, project one, and then exam one. And so within each of these blocks, I give you instructions on what to do to complete those assignments. And then as you're working on the assignments, remember that these assignments you work on a little bit at a time over the course of the exam block. And while you're doing that, you will cover each of these lessons daily. And the names of these lessons are listed on your course calendar. So look at the calendar, verify which concept you're covering on which day, and then this is the information you need to do and complete um, to prepare for that concept information on your assignments. So for the basic numeracy day, you're going to read section 1-1, watch a video, review some lecture notes, and then complete the practice homework for the section that you just covered. Now remember for practice homework, it's only for practice and it does not count toward your final grade. Only the assignments listed here uh, count toward your final um, total grade. Alright, so you do this for each of the exam blocks. Uh, at the bottom here, Udacity lessons and problem sets are given just for extra practice and it's worded a little bit differently than what you'll see within your course, so that may be helpful or not, so you decide if you want to use any of the extra information. Alright, and then within the coursework folder, you have your ebook listed as one of the folders. And within the ebook contents, you have all of the chapters given here. And within the chapter folders, you have each of the sections. So you can quickly access any location within the ebook at any time by using your folders. You also have a StatCrunch link that takes you to StatCrunch, which we will learn to use for calculations.
The study plan that's listed here is good if you have time to do it. All of the problems within the course are given within the study plan, um, but it does take a little bit of time to complete. But the advantage to doing the study plan is that it um, documents and keeps track of your um, performance on the problems. And so it gives you mastery points. And once you've mastered a concept, it will tell you. So it's helpful in that it kind of lets you know which concepts you need to continue to work on more or which ones that you should be good for the exams. Uh, the study plan does not count for points. So if you don't have time to do it or if you just do part of it, uh, you're not docked any points for not completing it. And then know where the study aids folder is here. And notice that it does have a drop down. And so within the study aids folder, you have access to your Z score tables that you will use for your normal probabilities when you get to them. So remember where this is. And then you just click the page links here to access the tables in your ebook. Uh, if you forget where this is, just remember that the tables are located in the appendix of the ebook. So you could click on your ebook contents folder and then go to the appendix, which is linked right here on the ebook page. Okay. Now back to the study aids folder, you've got your z-score tables, you've got your tools for success, so there may be some links in here that help you out with stat crunch, applets that help you with specific concepts that you're working on, stat crunch study card, the graphing calculator study card, so know where the tools for success is and that there's information in here that might help you. Um, here's some StatCrunch video tutorials that are created by the folks at StatCrunch that might be helpful to you. But within the Professor Helps folder, I've done my own StatCrunch tutorial videos. So when you come into Professor Helps, these are things that I've done myself to help you. Uh, there's some tutorials here in Word documents that will help you with uh, standard deviations, hypothesis tests, but then here's the videos that will walk you through each of the types of problems that we do in this class. So you can click on these to see how to go about using StatCrunch for them. So I'll walk you through the problem, show you how to access StatCrunch, what menu options to use. So these will be very helpful in helping you um, use StatCrunch for the calculations. It will be important that you use some type of technology on your exams because the time limits um, progress. You start at 60 minutes for exam one, 90 minutes for exam three, two hours for the final exam, 75 minutes for exam two. I skipped that one. But the time increases steadily, but to do all the problems by hand, you're going to run out of time. So learn how to use StatCrunch or the graphing calculator. And then in addition to those in study aids, I've got lecture notes that I've created myself that may be useful. Again, this is extra information, so remember to use it if it helps you, but don't let it confuse you. So if you have trouble with them, um, just use the information in your exam block folders. And then PowerPoint slides created by the Pearson folks are also listed here that you can click on and open up to help you with any of the sections in your course. And then remember that I'm available for any questions that you've got. So if you have questions about the course, about any problems you're working on, try to contact me first for help. Um, I'm available by email, by text, and I use both of those methods. We can get into the um, online classroom here in the course if that would be helpful. Um, but use me for any questions that you've got first. Uh, if something like your schedule or the, your time availability, your family uh, situation, if anything prevents communication with me, then you can use online tutoring through Pearson and through BrainFuse uh, in your Blackboard account. So know that those are available if um, it's just not possible for us to get together to answer the questions, but just know that I am available um, for any questions that you've got. 
All right, and then after you've reviewed all of the coursework information, you've got links here for your assignments, and that gives you the full assignment list as you'll cover it for the course. And it looks like Pearson's running a little bit slow. There we go. So it gives you the list here of courses in the order that you will complete them and it gives the deadlines over here. Uh, for any of your assignments, the deadlines are midnight on the night of the date. I've got it listed as 11.59 p.m. and at that point the links will no longer be available to submit those assignments. Alright, and then you can access your gradebook at any point. And then I usually click on this entire course to date button just to show all of the assignments that you've done. Um, if you do the past month or the past two weeks, it may not show all of the assignments that you're looking for. Now within the coursework folder in the exam blocks, you are working on projects for each of the, box, uh, of the exam blocks. And there's upload project links in here. And so when you click on those, it will take you to the project drop box where you can upload your projects for others to view and you will comment in the discussion board on some of the projects. But if these links within the coursework folder don't work or Pearson's giving you problems with any of the links, you can go to the project drop box directly through the navigation button as well. And then the discussion board in the discussion board, remember you access that to make an introduction for the course and you'll also use the discussion board to post your comments on um, one of the projects for each of the exam block. Okay, so here's your introduction folder. Here's my introduction that I've made and some of the pictures that I posted. Uh, to post your introduction, just click respond here and you can put your introduction information in. Here's the project comment drop boxes. And then ask each other questions is a special forum that I have that's just for you guys to kind of hash things out. I know sometimes if it's over a weekend or a holiday and I may not be available for a day or so, you might go in here and just say, does anybody know where to take the syllabus quiz or whatever your question is? and you guys can help each other. So I typically do not come in here into the ask each other questions. This is just for you guys, but if you can't figure something out together, uh, be sure to let me know and I'll get involved in it. The online classroom here is available if we need to uh, meet in real time, but what I typically find is that email works very good or telephone conversations that we can get on uh, the phone together and go through a problem at the same time while we're both online and that seems to work very good. So just let me know what you need and we'll decide if we need to use the online classroom or not. And now the Got Questions folder is a very important folder. When you get to this folder, I want you to go through every single question in here and just review them at the top just to know that answers to these questions are already given here in the Got Questions folder. I get numerous questions every semester um, about can I submit work late, can I work at my own pace, those common kinds of questions um, that I get a lot very often I put in this Got Questions folder. So just kind of review this list just to um, see if your question is included here. And so for example, do I have to complete the study plan? If you miss the video and um, or forgot what I said in the video about it, you can click the question and it brings you down and here's an answer for it. And then back to the FAQ list. Uh, I'll be on vacation during the week of the final exam. Can I take the final after I get back from vacation? Uh, that's a common question because during the summer especially or over breaks within the regular semesters, students want to know if they're going to be gone during specific exams. Can they take them late? 
And typically the answer is no. You have to take it early if you're going to be um, out of town on those specific exam dates. Now for the proctored exam, if you are taking this class in the summer, you can schedule a proctor at a local college in the area where you are going to be. So if you are going to be home when you're typically at school during a regular semester, you can contact a testing center at a college or public library in your hometown. Or if you're going to be on vacation, if it's over the summer, you can locate a library or a college um, in the town where you'll be vacationing. So know where this Scott Questions folder is. There's a lot of good information in here for you. My information is lo located in the My Professor folder. So you can contact me at my cell phone number uh, by text, or you can email me at my email address. You can email me also within the course or from the problems. If you're in a question, there is an Ask My Instructor button in there and you can click on that to also email me a question from the specific problems that you're working on. Information on how to schedule your proctor exam is located in the Schedule Proctor folder, so be sure to review this information, click all the links, and make sure you are aware of how to schedule that proctored exam. If you prefer to use the walk-in appointments at Leestown Campus, uh, no appointment is needed for those, but you do have to be there by a certain time. So go here to the Proctoring Center website and get all the information about the walk-in appointments as well as scheduled appointments. And then your final exam information here, just basic information about your exam as to how long you have to take it, how many questions there is, scheduling with your proctor, and then be sure to click the link here for STAT 210 final exam information. You might go ahead and print that off and be using that on all of your exams to get used to using it. But it includes a formula sheet, your probability tables, and the tutorial for using StatCrunch. So you don't have to put all that to memory. You don't have to remember all the formulas or how to do the questions in StatCrunch. I do give you all of the processes that you can use on your final exam. You will not be allowed to use your ebook, PowerPoint, lecture notes, any activity problems that are printed out, all of that is not permitted on the exam. Um, external websites are also not permitted. So when you're taking that with a proctor, be careful that you do not access any external websites. They may knock you out of your exam or you may be documented as having cheated. And if that comes to me, then you automatically fail the final exam. So be careful with that. Well, I think that takes us to the end of the course navigation buttons. These other links over here are my buttons and they are not available in your course. So be sure to let me know if you have questions about any of the course navigation or getting started in the course.